Hi, this is Ralph, and in this video I want to expand a little bit on the check for blank function that I just did a little bit ago in the previous video. So in my last video, we have a simple form. Let me just load this up on our uh, the old web page here. So I had a simple form, first name and last name, and when the user tried to submit the form, it would check to see if the first name field was blank. And if it was, it would give them an alert, and it would color the border of that box red. Okay. Let me just go ahead and refresh. Oh, and it stops the form. So let me just kind of refresh that. Head back over to my editor. So that simply checks for the value of the first name box. But now I want to check for the values of both boxes to see if either of them are blank. So what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to expand on my existing function. So I'm going to go ahead and start off with in my check for blank function, I'm going to declare a variable. This variable is going to be called error message and it's going to be equal to nothing. It's going to be equal to empty. So there is no error message at the beginning. Then we're going to go through our function here. The variable message starts with nothing. If the first name field is blank, then what I'm going to do, instead of just providing an alert here, I'm going to append. So that means I'm going to do a plus equals. Oh, let's, I'm sorry. I'm going to do an error message plus equals and then I'll simply put in something like um, enter your first name and I'm also going to do a backslash in which is going to give me a line break okay so if the first name field is blank then my error message is going to be appended. Remember, my error message started off with nothing. So if they left the first name field blank, my error message is now going to have into your first name in there. I'm still going to color the border of that particular box red. I'm going to take return false out for now. Okay, so this is just checking for the first name box. Pretty easy. I'm going to select this entire if statement, copy it and paste. So now I have duplicates and I'm going to change this over to last name. Enter your last name and then L name. And if you recall from that other tutorial, F name and L name are simply the IDs of my two text boxes. Okay, so the function is now my variable error message is blank. But if the first name field is empty or blank, then it's going to append my error message. Then the next statement is going to check for last name. If my last name is blank, then it's going to append my error message again. So those two if statements are done. Then I'm going to create another if statement. This is my third if statement in the function. And I'm just going to do a paste here. If my error message is not equal to empty. Okay, think about this for a moment. My error message started off as being empty. If the person didn't make any make any mistakes, then my error message will still be empty. And if my error message is still empty, everything's fine. But if they made some mistakes, then my error message is going to have some content. So if my error message is not empty, meaning it has content, then I'm going to display an alert. And my alert is simply going to be my error message, whatever that happens to be. I'm going to send an alert of my error message. And I've already got a typo there. Error message. There we go. And instead of, of course, this border color, I'm going to have return false, which means my form will get stopped in its tracks. So let's see what we have now. I've got a function for check for blank. I'm declaring a variable called error message and that error message is empty. I'm going to check my first name field. If my first name field is empty, I'm going to append my error message and I'm going to color the border of that text box red. Then I'm going to check for the last name field. If the last name field is empty, I'm going to append my error message and I'm going to check or I'm going to make the border of that text box red. And then I'm going to see if my error message has anything. If my error message has something in it, meaning it's not empty, then I'm going to provide an alert and I'm going to stop the form. Well, what if everything is fine? Well, if everything is fine, 
then nothing will happen related to my first name box nothing will happen related to my last name box my error message will still be empty which means nothing will get triggered here and the form gets submitted just fine so let me save this I didn't have to make any changes by the way to my form I just modified my my function a bit so now I can head back over to my browser Let's see make sure I'm all refreshed here and I'm just gonna hit send data enter your first name into your last name okay and they're both red all right well what if I have one of them empty Ralph and then I'll click send data oh into your last name and that box is red refresh what if I just enter a last name if I can spell my last name send data into your first name and that box is red there we go so now we are checking for two fields to see if those are blank two text boxes by the way that those are blank so our level of complexity is starting to build up for um, form validation